Okay, hello, good evening. In this video, I want to talk about using the XLOOKUP function for creating um, dynamic named ranges. Um, the XLOOKUP function um, was introduced to Office 365 users, or if you may, Office 365 insiders. I think that was August 28, 2019. It's also to be the panacea for all lookup problems. It's able to replace, you know, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, LOOKUP, index and match. Okay, so um, this video isn't about the XLOOKUP function and about how it really works, but just how it is um, able to um, create dynamic named ranges. Of course, we have done this previously with the index function, with the offset function. The question of volatility comes in, but that's a subject for another day. Uh, some people create tables because tables are dynamic in nature and they can use that for, you know, dynamic named ranges. But based on an example by Bill Jelen on office support.com on the XLOOKUP function, I felt, okay, if it works this way, then it should be able to create dynamic named ranges for us. So this video isn't in any way trying to um, take the shine off the other functions or methods I've described, but just to show you one more way that you can do it and have fun with it. So I'm just going to do a quick example to show the VLOOKUP, um, XLOOKUP function rather, and then I um, go into what I really want to share, which is creating dynamic named ranges using the XLOOKUP function. So what I want to do is I want to look up the number 20, let's say 13, and return Japan in this case. So 13. And I'm kind of looking up to the left, which VLOOKUP would struggle with without some creativity, of course. So XLOOKUP, let's just look at it quickly. XLOOKUP value, that's your 13. LOOKUP array, you know it's going to be found somewhere in column B. So I do control shift down, select that. I can make the reference absolute, but that's not important for now. I want to return something from here. So control shift down too. And you know, your ranges or arrays must be of equal, you know, height, width, or length, if you may. Right? Then next thing, if not found, this is more like an if error. If you can't find it, what should you do? I can say return nothing blank, which is typically what I would do if I used if error. Okay, next thing, match mode. Some interesting entries here. When I saw the wildcard character match, I felt okay, good. You know, something triggered my head like mm, this would come in handy. But for now, we are doing an exact match. So that's going to be zero. Next thing, search from first to last, last to first. I felt okay. This is really handy because sometimes you're looking for the last, you know, matching value for, you know, the lookup value. So rather than use some very funky formulas to do that, you can just search from end to the beginning. And, you know, the first entry you find is really what you want. So in, but in this case, we are doing search from first to last. So I do one, control enter. You can see your Italy right there. If you do 22, you should have South Korea. Okay. All right. So that's just how it works simply. Um, you know, there are other videos by Leila Girani, Bill Jelin. They've done justice to the XLOOKUP function. So I'm going to leave that for now. So for creating dynamic range ranges, what's the first thing you want to do? The first thing is to know, of course, where the range ends. You probably know where it starts from. It's A1, you know, but it ends somewhere here. But what I want to be able to do is that I add new entries. You know, I want it to be able to expand. Okay? So, simply put, um, where the range ends here is the last non-blank cell. Okay? Or if you want to say it in another way, if you search from end to beginning, the first cell you encounter that is non-blank is obviously the last cell when you start from the top. So, I mean, it's one and the same thing. So you can go in that, you know, manner. Search from end to beginning, and the first entry you find that isn't blank, you know, is where the range ends. Once we have that, we can use an index type construct you know, to create the range. Okay, so let's give it a shot. So equals to X lookup. Lookup value. Now, we don't know what's going to be in that last cell. The only thing we know is that that cell is not going to be blank. So I can use a wildcard, right? So whatever it is, I don't know. Lookup array, of course, I have to select the entire thing. Else I'll be shooting myself in the foot if I just restricted it to a few cells. Return array, same thing. If not found, blank. Match mode. Now I'm not going to do an exact match. I'm not going to do any of the exact matches. It has to be a wildcard. So I do two. And then search mode. I say search from 
last to first. Okay, and you see South Korea now it's more like Eureka. I move this to the right so that I can apply the same formula to Colombia and C. And then Eureka hits <laughs> the floor. And now you see something is not right here, right? It returns South Korea correctly. For Colombia, it doesn't return anything. Here it returns Johnson rather than 11. Um, I'm sure the pattern is kind of obvious. What's happening? It's not able to return numbers. It's only returning text. It returns the last, you know, non-blank cell that contains a text or that's formatted as a text, which isn't exactly what I want, right? Because there are some times that my range might just contain all numbers and, you know, I need it to work. So, uh, I was like, Ugh. you know, brick wall, roadblock. So, what do we do? So, I said, okay, fine. Let's try again using a very interesting approach. Same thing, I go with the XLOOKUP. I'm going to leave the lookup value for now, but I'm going to come back to it just shortly. My lookup array, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to check if they are not blank, right? If they are not blank, I will get a true, true, true from A1 to A11, and I'll get my first false at A12. So it means they'll be true all the way. So if I search from the end to the beginning, the first true I get is obviously the last entry here. That's the idea, and that should work either way. So search from end to beginning, the first true you get is the first, you know, non-black cell starting from the end, which obviously is the last non-blank cell if you start from the top. Okay, let me just show you what this evaluates to. Let me change this to A1 to A, let's say, 13, just so that we can have some other entries. So let's use F9 to evaluate. Let's see. So you see, you have trues all the way. You have two forces, which are for cells um, A12 and A13, right? Okay, so I'll take this back. Okay, but just so you see, What's going on? So it means my lookup value here will be true. That's what I need. Right? Then my return array, I'm returning the same thing. If not found blank, match mode. Now I'm not going to do a wildcard character match because I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a true within what this array evaluates to. So I'm going to do an exact match, which is zero. Here, still same. I'm going to set from end to beginning, last to first. So minus one. Control enter. So you have South Korea. Let's drag this right. Okay. And this works. So with this, since we are able to return the last, you know, used cell, if you may, or the last non-blank cell, we can obviously create our range using this. It's for one thing for you to understand that X lookup, just like the index function, doesn't exactly return a value, really returns a range, but depending on what function you then feed it into it may use it as a range or it may use the value in the cell so let me show you something interesting let's pull up our name manager okay so now you can create the range you know using the xlookup function but the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to um, just make this um you know absolute right so I'm going to copy this because I'll be needing it in my name manager. Control F3 will get me to the name manager. I do new. I call my range XLK, maybe RNG. Refers to, I know it's going to start from A1. Put a colon and do Control V. Now, yes, this X lookup, I did it returns a value, but it returns a cell, actually, a cell address, a range, depending on how it's used. If you say equals to that, then it returns the value in the cell. If you're using it in this context, it's going to use the address. So you can do okay. Now let's see where it refers to. You can see it goes all the way to South Korea. So for us to test, we just add two more entries to it. Croatia, Cyprus. There are other ways to check, but we can go back to this, select the range, and you can see it's fine. You can take out all this. 
let's go back control f3 and you see so the xlookup function can actually perform the same magic that index and offset are able to do so if you've liked the video if you like the video you can you know click the like button you can also you know pass some comments okay thank you very much